An organization with as many secrets as the SCP Foundation requires the ability to dispose of material that could prove harmful to the facade of normalcy that the O5 Council desperately wishes to uphold. And because most of the high-ranking researchers are a bit too smart and practical to simply flush classified documents and unwanted objects down the toilet, that means the Foundation has to get rid of evidence thorough enough to guarantee that absolutely no trace of what needs to be disposed of survives. For this purpose, several waste disposal plants are used as front companies for the Foundation and function internally as a foolproof way to liquidate hazardous material and comprising information. But not all secrets are so easily forgotten with the push of a button and a rare few can prove too resilient to be burned away. This is the regrettable case of the anomalies contained within the site now designated SCP-2419, a place where the unfortunate consequence of amnestic experiments has led to the creation of hateful, immortal humanoids, fated to be sealed within the incinerators of the facility. These undead freaks are known as SCP-2419-A, and though they were made from human bodies, the consciousness that dwells within each instance is nothing short of pure evil. Every happy memory and associated positive emotion was extracted from the brains of SCP-2419-A corpses prior to their attempted disposal in the incinerators. This was done in order to increase the effectiveness of standard-issue Foundation amnestics. But the cost of this minor breakthrough was that these bodies, all of which were once D-Class personnel, had effectively been stripped of all human qualities. Given the sorts of violent criminal backgrounds that earns an individual the designation of D-Class personnel, these former humans were the last people that should have been deprived of the love and joy in their hearts. And when the first of these psychopathic laughing men crawled out of one of SCP-2419's incinerators, the Foundation learned all too well what an uninhibited criminal mind looked like, driven only by rage and fury that inspired their most gruesome acts of exploitation and violence in life. Their pain has made them too hateful to succumb to the flames. They are the archetypal sinners of a burning hell that the Foundation's best intentions pave the road to. And when they break loose, all that hell breaks loose with them. But no place of the damned leaves its gates unguarded. Dante's Inferno posits that the ancient Greek mythological figure Minos, serpentine father of the Minotaur and judge of wicked souls, guards the pit of hell with stern vigilance. The Greeks themselves favored the image of Cerberus, a three-headed hound that served its lord Hades as a watchdog. For the ancient Egyptians, there was Amut, the devourer of the dead, who consumed the hearts of the unrighteous in the afterlife. While this sort of guardian beast is not officially on the Foundation's payroll, the concept turned out to be alive and well in the present day when SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy reptile, stood against the laughing men and gave them the fight of their tortured, unliving existence. It all began when the guards stationed at SCP-2419 began to hear banging from inside one of the incinerators. It seemed as though the SCP-2419-A instance on the other side was determined to breach containment, so Mobile Task Force Beta-7, the Maz Hatters, were called in to stand with all weapons at the ready. But this was exactly what the instance wanted. As soon as the armed force had fully assembled, the laughing man inside ripped the door from its hinges. It proceeded to use it as a cover and run full speed towards the mobile task force, who opened fire immediately. SCP-2419-A were known to possess extremely fast regenerative abilities, so it would take a lot of punishment to slow this instance down. But this was no unthinking zombie, and the instance broke its charge the second it was in the midst of the mobile task force agents to twirl the door around like a trained martial artist. This not only sent the incoming bullets ricocheting everywhere, causing many of the Beta-7 operatives to be hit by their own friendly fire, it also allowed the instance to bludgeon several agents with sides of the door. As the remaining mobile task force members retreated to a less exposed vantage point, where they could employ heavy artillery, the instance used this moment of confusion to pitch the door backwards towards the incinerators in a boomerang trajectory. The force and spin of the door knocked two more incinerator doors off their hinges, 
and caused two other instances of SCP-2419-8 to emerge. One, who was so thoroughly decomposed that it appeared to be more than a flaming skeleton, sprinted forth and threw handfuls of hot cinders at the Foundation agents. It used its still-burning body to ignite a few of the closest agents, laughing with sadistic glee as it did so. Seconds after the emergence of the two new instances, a grenade launcher was fired at the first escapee. The blast was enough to deal significant damage, but the instance was indifferent to its own pain. It pointed to the agent wielding the grenade launcher, and a moment later, the third instance was at the agent's throat, strangling him to death. It was starting to become clear to the Mold Task Force that this was no random containment breach. It was a coordinated escape attempt by three ruthless criminal masterminds, who in their time contained at the site SCP-2419 had probably decided there was some truth to the old adage that misery loves company. And indeed, these three D-Class were some of the best of the best when it came to being the worst of the worst. D-1576, formerly Police Lieutenant Campbell Farage, a riot cop with a serious taste for carnage. Whenever the streets of the city precinct he presided over turned violent, Farage always made sure that the violence didn't die down too quickly. His nasty penchant for bludgeoning suspects and citizens alike with his riot shield did wonders for the escape plan he had coordinated with his fellow laughing men. He was eventually tried and sent to a supermax after picking a fight with several other officers in the line of duty, a fight that resulted in a pair of rookie officers who opposed his violent methods being hospitalized with permanent comas. The skeleton was D-4483, Damien Lambert, a prolific arsonist who terrorized three counties while avoiding detection under the guise of being a sovereign citizen. If there was ever a person who wanted just to watch the world burn, it was Damien Lambert. He was caught in the process of setting fire to an elementary school and was thankfully apprehended before any of the kerosene he had poured through the halls ignited. When the truth about his previous history of pyromania came out, Lambert faced death row until the Foundation chose to recruit him as D-Class. Then there was D-2316, Arnold Roper, who was better known as the Illinois Strangler, responsible for over 50 deaths in two decades before he was arrested and detained. While he mostly used his bare hands to do the deed, Roper was fond of using metal chains and heavy-duty choke collars, usually worn by animals to perform his namesake act of violence. Roper wasn't just brutally strong, he was crafty too, and the trio of Laughing Men had him to thank for some of the finer points of the escape plan. The three now immortal D-Class also had one thing in common. Each of them had met the ends of their cruel and violent lives at the jaws and claws of SCP-682, and now that they had outmaneuvered and slaughtered Mobile Task Force Beta-7, their only collective goal was to get revenge on the monster that condemned them all to the fiery hell of the incinerator. The Laughing Men soon breached the limits of the SCP-2419 containment site and began making their way overland towards the facility where all of them had met their original fate. They knew they needed wheels to get there, so the instances made their way to the nearest gas station from the waste disposal plant they'd come from and made short work of the staff. Lambert stocked up on lighters, kerosene, and Duraflame, while Farage took the emergency shotgun that the cashier hadn't had time to fire. In her defense, it would have been difficult to accomplish much of anything with Roper's hands clasped around her throat. Once the trio of undead psychopaths had stocked up on weapons, they waited for a suitable vehicle to pull into the lot. And before long, there was. A family SUV, with a happy family inside, no less. Farage ordered Lambert to keep his fire-starting tendencies in check, as a gas station explosion was the last thing they needed right now. The former riot cop made his way out to the car and used the shotgun to threaten the family out of the car. Family road trips can be stressful, but rarely does one expect to be carjacked by a gang of the undead. Farage told the unlucky mortals that he wouldn't hurt them if they let himself and his two friends use their car. And true to his word, he didn't fire a single shot. The family were all added to Roper's list of victims instead. After that, the three men took to the wheel, and with only their hazy memories of pain and suffering to guide them, drove relentlessly towards the Foundation facility, where their enemy SCP-682 was contained. 
The three had made sure to leave no human alive at their original containment site, and would allow no witnesses who saw their anomalous corpse-like forms to survive. They couldn't afford to give the Foundation a heads up that the Reckoning was on its way in a family motor vehicle. Meanwhile, at the Laughing Man's intended destination, SCP-682 was having another perfectly routine day of painfully soaking in a tank of corrosive acid. This was par for the course for the reptile, and it found itself as eager as anyone else stuck in a rut to get a break from the repetitive mundanity of containment. Little did the human-hating monster know, it would soon get its wish. A few hours later, the facility was shocked to find that several fires had been lit at the fringes of the testing units. These were no freak accidents, but rather the work of Damien Lambert. The arsonist still had memories of all the times he wished he could just burn his jailer's buildings to the ground, and had targeted the most vulnerable areas for combustion. The flames threatened the integrity of several areas of the facility, and multiple containment breaches were imminent if the blaze couldn't be kept under control. While any available agents with firefighting experience sought to minimize the damage, the researchers evacuated to safer parts of the building bringing any sensitive documents and flammable items far away from the affected sections. This kind of pandemonium was exactly where Officer Farage thrived, and he soon entered the fray, causing enough commotion that Roper was able to slip deeper into the facility completely undetected. This turned out to be the perfect role for the Strangler, as he hadn't eluded the police for 20 years of his life just by being lucky. Farage and Lambert would both join up with him after they were finished having their fun. For now, his task was to locate the containment unit of SCP-682, and give the beast a taste of what the trio had in store. Along the way, he made sure to obtain some durable metal chains from a different containment unit. He likely released some kind of elder evil in the process, but Roper didn't care about the consequences. The bottom line was that he was always able to do his best work when he was armed. It wasn't long before he found the large chamber which housed his most hated foe, SCP-682. Roper laughed maniacally as he approached the creature floating in its acid tank. Remember me, lizard? The strangler said, sporting a wide grin. The monster simply growled back at Roper, wishing to tear him apart. Roper chuckled again and wrapped the iron chains around the vat. With all the considerable strength of his immortal muscles, the Strangler pulled the chains taut and shattered 682's containment unit. The anomalous chain snared the creature's body, holding it in place. How about now? Roper taunted 682. He laughed, but the creature laughed back. No, said the reptile. I don't remember you, but you are disgusting. The monster lunged towards a nearby wall and burst through, dragging Roper along with it by his chain still wrapped around the creature's body. 682 twisted and turned, flinging Roper against every wall and obstacle in sight. But to its surprise, the stranger was regenerating, and his grip on the chains was unyielding. Back down the hall, Farage was still continuing his rampage when he ran into an unlikely adversary. Dr. Alto Clef stood between the Laughing Man and the other researchers, and as usual, the good doctor was packing heat. He told the other researchers to go on without him, while he contained the SCP-2419 instance on his own. A bold move, to be sure, but Dr. Clef had made the same mistake he was always making, by assuming that guns were the solution to this problem. Farage laughed off the bullets and slammed into Dr. Clef with enough force to leave a crater in the wall behind him. He followed up with a merciless barrage of punches, beating the armed researchers senseless, and only relenting for a moment to steal a few of his prized firearms. With a blow that would have taken the life of any normal man, Farage struck Dr. Clef once more and left him lying there a hair's length from death. Dr. Clef's anti-anomaly field may have protected him from reality warpers, but it did very little against being kicked repeatedly, very hard, in the face. Elsewhere, Lambert had made his way into the facility, setting more fires as he went. The arsonist's skeleton was a terrifying sight to all that beheld it, and when the guards realized that none of their weapons would have any effect, most of them started to run away from Lambert rather than towards him. All three laughing men would soon be upon 682, and then the fight of their afterlives could truly begin. Until that moment, Roper was buying his partners in hatred more time. The chains he had stolen were no ordinary metal, and with them he had managed to keep 682's jaws shut 
while he pounded away at its exposed ribs with his inhuman strength. Roper had killed more people than either of his former D-Class compatriots, but all that seemed to mean nothing in the face of this invincible reptile. The shame and powerlessness he had once felt as the creature had mauled him to death made his immortal heart beat with outrage. When he was alive, the Illinois stranger had always thought that his gift for murder made him better than the average person, a man among men. But this thing had made him feel weak in his last moments of humanity, and that sickening emotion of weakness was still sliding around in his soul with all of the other despair and malice. If his fate were to live forever as a dead man walking, then he would make damn sure that any humiliation he suffered would be paid back threefold. This soup of impotent fury bubbled within Roper as SCP-682's strength suddenly increased, shattering the weak link of the chains and sending the hapless strangler flying backwards. At that precise moment, Farage leaped out of a nearby hallway and unleashed Dr. Clef's arsenal on the reptile. This sustained fire irritated the creature, and it turned its focus towards the unliving dirty cop. It readied a charge only to be suddenly held fast by Roper, who had grabbed its tail. Farage fired until there was no more ammo, then pistol whipped the creature in both of its eye sockets. SCP-682 thrashed and struggled, so the men began to circle the reptile and alternate delivering formidable body blows. They took far more damage than they could dish out with their bare hands, but the regeneration that their preternatural hatred granted them meant that both instances could theoretically keep this up all day. Roper grabbed a broken length of the anomalous chain, while Farage picked up a metal table to use as a makeshift riot shield. The beatdown continued as 682's eyes regenerated, along with several new sensory organs to give it a full 360-degree view of the pitched brawl that was taking place. A fiery explosion blew open a nearby wall, and in walked Lambert, still skeletal and laughing as uproariously as ever. He threw a Molotov cocktail at 682's back, causing the creature to ignite immediately. The reptile roared in sudden agony. Farage, Lambert, Roper regrouped at the creature's flank and pushed together until they forced it back through the hole where the arsonist had entered from. They were now all together in the inferno, the three laughing men who refused to die, and the indestructible monster that made them into what they were. Roper quickly knotted the chains and wrapped them around one of the creature's claws, securing the other end around his waist. Like a trained boxer, he bobbed and weaved, pummeling the beast with all he had. Any step back from SCP-682 was met with the immortal man shifting his entire body weight to pull the creature's leg out from under it. Farage wedged his shield into the creature's open jaw, widening it to an uncomfortable degree and temporarily limiting 682's bite force. He took out the shotgun that he had stolen from the gas station and blasted it down the reptile's gullet. When that plan had run its course, he started clubbing 682 about its neck and head with the butt of the shotgun. Lambert simply continued to douse the arena with more flammable material, especially himself and the creature. He climbed onto 682's back with his burning bones and hammered away at its defenses with literal fists of fire. The arsonist was incapable of articulate speech due to the damage to his body prior to his death, but if he could speak, he would probably be celebrating the fact that he had become what he had always wanted to be. Damien Lambert was no mere pretender with a fetish for fire. He was fire itself. A brightly burning god of destruction that left no inch of the world unburnt and no molecule of oxygen unconsumed. His mother and father would be proud of him as they waited in hell for the sun who would never arrive. The sun who would make the planet they left behind into a true hell where he would reign supreme. That is, until SCP-682 stole that dream out from under him. With a flash of blue and green from deep within, 682 began to burn with a never-before-seen chemical reaction, an impossible event that could only be described as anti-fire. The turquoise anti-flames devoured the orange and yellow ones, leaving Lambert in a state of panic, which was soon shared by his fellow laughing men. The three former D-classes had gotten so used to the torments of the incinerator that the idea that anything could be more painful had never occurred to them. And yet, here it was, the Anti-Fire, which devoured all flames and directly inflicted unimaginable suffering to the trio of instances. 
Every particle of their still regenerating bodies felt as if it were ice cold and melting into nothingness at the same time. Numbed and broken all over again, the laughing men were consumed all over by the anti-flames and fell into a state of suspended animation. With the Foundation finally getting everything back under control 24 hours later, SCP-682 was contained in a new acidic chamber. There were some new ordinances from all present and surviving researchers about exposing it to fire, as the anti-flames it produced were considered too hazardous to ever exist within the facility again. As for the three laughing men who had escaped from SCP-2419, they were returned to their containment units inside of the incinerators and never exhibited signs of aggression or escape attempts ever again. A psychological profile of Farage, Lambert, and Roper that all of them could still feel the sting of the burns left by 682's anti-fire to this day, and that not even exposure to natural heat and fire could ever reduce that pain. Now go check out Could SCP-682 Be Contained in the Back Rooms? and evil monster created by SCP Foundation SCP-2419 The Laughing Men for more of today's terrifying combatants in action.